Well, overall, Canada's economy is doing well. It's expanding faster than any other country in the G7. And the Bank of Canada indicated earlier this week that it does not want to cool down that growth anytime soon. It left its benchmark interest rate unchanged at 1% after two consecutive hikes. Well, for more on the Canadian economy, I spoke to journalist and author Diane Francis. She's a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council, and I started off by asking about her reaction to the bank's decision. Well, I think it's a very prudent decision. Uh, there's nothing terribly dramatic to worry about, but you don't want to be ratcheting interest rates up or down, uh, which would adversely affect any of those other things, whether it's inflation, currency values, or the NAFTA negotiations. Um, and so Canada, I think, is, is just humming along okay, uh, given the fact that there's a little bit of uncertainty about NAFTA. So then we have seen a few rate hikes since July. How is all this and the pace of these rate hikes affecting Canada's overall economy? Well, rate hikes are always a negative, I think, for the private sector and for the public sector. We have a very indebted population. Uh, people have huge debts in, in the form of mortgages mostly, as well as consumer spending, but mostly mortgages. Our housing prices are, are in our, some of our cities are among the highest in the West, Western Hemisphere. And that it has a lot to do with foreign buying of condos in Vancouver and Toronto. And that means that mortgage rates and demand supply is out of sync on housing and they've gone uh, very high. So if you start to increase interest rates, uh, then that will affect uh, housing prices and also affect consumer spending because it just means people will have to spend more money to have a roof over their heads. And so I think that leaving it where it is right now is a very prudent idea. Now, we know that housing has been a challenge and the government has put some cooling measures in place. Um, other than housing, what are some other challenges do you think we should be paying attention to in Canada's economy? Well, I don't think a great deal, except that, you know, we took a big hit on commodity prices after a big lift on commodity prices. So we've had sort of a topsy-turvy situation. Oil is uh, around 50-ish. That's okay. Uh, at 40, it wasn't okay. Uh, and the other commodities that Canada sells, which is kind of the underpinning for our economy, uh, by no means the majority of our economy, but an important underpinning, has taken a hit. And that, of course, affects the, the income and the profitability of the companies in Canada and the people working for commodities-based companies. So that is something that we have been able to kind of take in our stride. And I think that we're kind of we're over the worst of it. You see some announcement about oil sands plants restarting operations and production. And that's anticipation that the Keystone Pipeline will be built. Uh, which has been approved by Trump, uh, but still has some other things to go through. So uh, some of the signs are, are pretty okay for Canada. Now, Canada, especially compared to other developed economies, has been on a pretty impressive run over the last four quarters. What's been driving that growth? Well, I think we have uh, a, a, a private sector that's humming along nicely, as I say. In the last four quarters, we've had a little bit of a rebound on the commodity price. Uh, say, a si side, which is very helpful uh, to the economy. Uh, we have good tourism. Uh, we have a, uh, a big influx of, of refugees who are, of course, spending money and uh, renting apartments and buying groceries. And that doesn't hurt either. Uh, and then, of course, our trade with the United States is humming along very well. Now, in terms of NAFTA renegotiations, how are Canadian officials looking at the progress being made and how it might affect future U.S.-Canada ties? Well, I would say that, the, that my, my guess is that the Canada-U.S. relationship is going to strengthen while the U.S.-Mexico will, will not strengthen. Uh, I think you're going to see more of, a, more of a bilateral arrangement between Canada and the U.S., which is what it was before Mexico joined and a lessening of ties and more restrictions on the Mexico trade relationship. So it might be NAFTA, it may be three bilaterals, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, they're not commenting here because I think it's very slow going. The Americans are, are playing hardball uh, because of the protectionist nature of the regime now in power in the presidency. And so um, I think it's going along fine. I don't think Canada is going to take any major, major hits. and. Uh, uh, you know, the U.S. and Canada are very symbiotic, and they have no trade deficit with Canada. They have a big one with Mexico, as they do with China and Germany, but not with Canada. It's almost in perfect harmony if you include goods as well as services. So we haven't caused them a problem on the trade side, and the cross-ownership between the two countries and the 
um, social connections and other connections between Canadians and Americans are very strong. So I don't think there'll any be, be any big surprises there, but I think it's going to take a long time because the Americans are playing hardball. And I think the big concern is with, with the Mexican part of the piece. Now, given NAFTA and other multinational situations like what's happening with Bombardier that also brings in the UK, possible concerns over, over steel and anti-dumping measures that the US might be looking at with Canada, how do you think Canada's other trade partners are viewing what's happening and perhaps some of the opportunities that might be available? Well, I think Canada is a great place to invest because, as I say, I really fully expect that the Canada-U.S. trade arrangement pretty much will stay intact regardless what happens with Mexico and so or NAFTA, so-called. Uh, remember, NAFTA is a trilateral deal, but buried inside of that is three bilaterals. So it can be divided into three bilaterals. And so I think Canada is always a good bet. Uh, for people who want to do business in the U.S. and Canada, barring any unforeseens. But remember, uh, the American uh, multinationals have huge stakes in the Canadian economy, so there's no way that the White House is going to shoot them in the foot by imposing restrictions on the border and on trade. And vice versa, the Canadian investment in the United States is enormous and very important to the U.S. So about 30 of the states in the U.S. trade more with Canada than they trade with any other country in the world. It is a very strong partnership, and I think it's going to get stronger, irrespective of Mexico.